I have received a fantastic challenge brief from a sponsor on this channel that I've had before, the Creality Falcon 2, which is a fantastic 22 watt laser cutter. They have challenged me to just make something cool and show you what I can do with their laser. So I think I have done that. Let's get into it. So I'm calling this a scratch build because my starting materials are this. A4 pieces of MDF. Ugh. Tree roots. And string. This is what I'm going to start making this cornate altar with. This jungle themed blood altar to the blood god. Because I'm starting a series on this channel which is going to be the apes of rage. My demon apes which I, you know, 3D printed. I'll talk about them in a bit. But for now, do the youtube -y things, pop a little subscribe if you're new here. Only one third of people who watch my videos are subscribed on quite a small channel, so it really makes a difference. Tickle my like button, please. Thank you. And we'll get going. So I fired up the Falcon 2 in its nice safety enclosure that I bought myself from Creality and made sure I was working safely, put my goggles on and zipped it shut. This has an inbuilt fan, so this will extract everything straight out of the window. I used this file for this 40k kind of little bit of terrain, little centerpiece here for walkways, and made it my own. I covered it in Aztec patterns, including designs of chimps and gorillas that I'd worked out myself, and hid cornate runes in the patterns as well. This was going to be my skull altar for my jungle monkey corn demon army. That is what I've decided to do with the giant 3D print that I've printed out from the Creality Palette Mage. That giant Kong I made a couple of episodes ago is going to be the leader of a demon army, the Apes of Rage. Now I'm using this 22 watt laser, the Creality Falcon 2, to cut out the terrain that I need for that army because you can include a skull altar for free in an Age of Sigma demons corn list. And this is what I need. Something custom, something cool, and something impressive. I got the right measurements with helps from people from Reddit. They were very kind of very helpful and even provided me with a scan of the bottom of one so I could see the rough footprint I needed to make. As I said earlier, Creality have challenged me to just make something cool with this laser cutter and show you the benefits of owning one to make miniature things like this. A really cool brief from a really cool company, not really putting pressure on me to, you know, get too technical and advertise with it. Just make something cool. Thank you, Creality. That's definitely a very me kind of brief. It took me about an evening to cut all this out and it was very fun to be able to film inside with my old phone because I didn't really care that if it got hit by a laser because it's my old phone that's just sat in a box anyway. But I was able to get some quite good shots of this machine working. With a nice time lapse going from above, I could really show you the efficiency this thing has. It goes like a printer when you're engraving. Now I'm expecting some laser burn here because I am engraving it thoroughly. I haven't really messed around with that before, more just the cutting side of things. So I thought I'd really show you the engraving capabilities of the Falcon 2 in this video. Once it was assembled and all together, I had this beautiful piece to work with. And now I put a few nicks and scratches in it with a little file to make it look more realistic and stone-like and like it had been sat in the jungle for a long time. And got to work using some normal standard modelling techniques along with my laser cutting to improve the look of this. To combine normal modelling techniques with laser cutting your own terrain. I wrapped the very 40k looking banisters with string. Now this took a very long time. This took hours to weave the string around and around and around and around. But after I had done this, I then sealed it all with wood glue that you can see off to the side there to make sure it wasn't an absorbent cotton mess to make sure that it was hard and ready for some paint. The fluff that came off this was unreasonable. You can see it start to build up like dust on the table around it. And I myself was covered with dust after this. This brought some well needed softness and roundness to these edge heavy railings to make them look a little bit more jungle fantasy-ish. 
once that was done, I glued some roots in the gap between the stairs and the altar to make it look like a tree had grown up and around this altar, that this had been here that long. And then I glued bits of fish tank plant to it, but it was very fiddly and very frustrating. It was a test of my patience for sure, but I got there in the end. Once they were all on, we could have a good look at what I created around the edges here. I wanted this to look like it was deep in the heart of a mystic dark jungle and that it had grown entwined with nature itself. <laughs> After this, I put a tasteful amount of skulls littered around the altar as Corn is, you know, Lord of the Skull Throne. So just a few here and there, just, just to give a little hint that this had maybe been used for a few sacrifices, just a cup. Oh, just a, you know, tasteful few. Not too many by, you know, any standards. Yeah, that's about enough, isn't it? Oh, a few more. A few more wouldn't hurt. Up under the stairs there. Oh, and some, some in the eyes. Yeah, that'll do. After that, I used some baked dirt to put all over the floor area of this laser cut piece and then also put some little bits of moss and tufts over the area because I'll be doing this before I painted it to add a nice texture to the green and brown jungle I planned to paint over the top of it. And now I had this finished product which was a beautiful amalgamation of this laser cutting technology and more classic miniature building stuff smashed together. It was time to get some paint on it. Once I had primed it all with black, I gave it an airbrush of green all over. This would be working as the undercoat for everything and make all the shadows look hopefully a bit mossy and dirty and naturey and get in those textures that the laser cutter had engraved on the whole piece for me. Once this was done, I worked up through the greens, really going to some quite bright greens in the middle of these plants, bring the jungle to life, and then carefully work on the trees, trying not to get too much overspray up through some browns, but not really caring that much about making a bit of a mess as long as I didn't hit any of the plants that I'd done before. If I hit the bits that were to be stone, I can re-go over that at that point, not an issue. I also used the lightest of browns from the trees to colour in this rope and then when I would do the skulls later on I would also highlight this with one of the bone colours as well, leaving the underside of this rope green to you know, signify the moss and humid growth up under there. The skulls got a blasting of different bone colours leading up to very bright at the top of the pile and staying quite dark at the bottom of the piles. This would show newer ones nearer the top and older more aged ones at the bottom of the piles. I also then took some other browns, some kind of deeper, ruddier browns, and added some dirt to the whole situation, making it look like earth buildup and jungle floor where the plants were sparse on the base. And then highlighted this with a little bit of lighter brown too. For the stonework, I used some Vallejo black and some Vallejo grey and mixed them together because this mix would be kind of what I would work up through. I would add more grey and more white to this as we got higher up. And I just wanted a nice smooth transition. So I started by mixing my own dark grey and then working up from there with it. I used these cheap makeup brushes because they're perfect for dry brushing and also doing the technique I will be doing here, which is over brushing. It's not quite dry brushing. You've got a little bit more paint on your brush, but not too much. Just to get the paint down in quite a painterly fashion and leave the deepest recesses the base spray color. After this, I moved up through the greys in that mixture and made some nice little stone markings with a bit of sponging, bringing a bit of texture to the smoother areas in this paint job where I hadn't put any of the laser cut engraving. I also did quite a dry sponging over the rest of the engraved areas just to pick up the raised areas and make it look like light was catching this lovely ancient engraving. From there I moved on to a dry brush of this almost white grey just to pick up all the edges and lighten the detail on this terrain. And with this altar for corn coming together it was time to introduce some blood for the blood god. I started by airbrushing a mixture of a few dark reds just to make some crimson staining down from the eyes of the beast. This King Kong corn symbol, not easy to say fast, is going to be crying blood into its altar. This is the staining of past blood and then I would use some fresh blood over the top of that with a nice gloss effect. 
I opted to use Tamiya Clear Red rather than Blood for the Blood God as I wanted this to be kind of violently bright red and gloss rather than the deep red of Blood for the Blood God. This is new, fresh, currently dripping down blood on this altar and I need it to look sparkling and stand out against the green kind of backdrop as red is a contrast in colour to green and it will pop very nicely. I also added little pools of it around the legs of this altar where it landed and made it look like it flowed through the cracks in this Mayan Aztec engraving and into the altar itself through the holes that have been laser cut into it. Then I had some on my brush and took quite a lot of it off making these drier drag marks to then smear down the stairs in a couple of passes to create the drag mark where they'd taken victims to their doom on the skull altar. I made a mixture of brown and green pigment powders and splattered them everywhere. This was to make it feel lived in, dusty, dirty, like it was naturally in a wooded or jungle area. It wouldn't be clean and as bright as this, but it would be this kind of blend between browns and greens everywhere. I took a bit off with the bigger makeup brushes and even blasted it with an airbrush to remove it where I didn't want it. With the painting all done, I really hope that Creality like what I've done with their challenge, a chaotic altar to the jungle gods. And one more thing to add to it is this. I bought a bike light for one pound. One pound. This will be perfect for lighting it up from the inside because when I was designing this, I left a hole in the bottom so I could slip this in and the holes in the skull eyes and stuff in the altar would shine this light through perfectly. Let's have a little look. With the lights dimmed, we can see that light shining out of the holes that the Falcon 2 cut in this lovely Mayan design. And we can see the wrath of corn leaking into the mortal realms. And from the top, we can also see the light underneath this altar where the blood drips down and the sacrifices are made. However, in the studio light, we can see the nice bright colours on this beautiful piece of terrain. I think I've definitely succeeded in making something cool with the laser cutter to show you all the benefits of owning one to make terrain like this. Look at this one of a kind, super thematic altar of corn. You have not seen anything like this, and you will not see anything like this anywhere else, unless you make it yourself. This scratch build has been a lot of fun and now I have made something fantastic to show off my apes of rage when I start painting them. I can do reveal shots on this beautiful altar themed to their army. I haven't started painting the apes of rage yet but those videos are coming very very soon. For now you'll have to take this taster of their little altar in the middle of the rainforest and stick with that. I haven't got any apes painted, but I do have some corn miniatures painted from a project from way before I started this channel. So we can have a little look at the scale of this altar. Here we have a corn character with some hounds flanking the stairs. You can see the size of this, how it would look on the tabletop. It's roughly about the same size as the one you can buy from GW, but this one is definitely one of a kind. Let me know if you'd like to see some more terrain in this style because I would kind of like to do a whole board of jungle terrain. Creality, what do you think about that? Want me to make a whole board of this stuff to show people what I can do with the laser cutter? So thank you to Creality for sponsoring this video. If you would like to see me make a whole jungle's worth of altars and different bits of temple, let me know in the comments and I'll see if they're interested in letting me do it again. In the meantime, subscribe to my channel. We are growing. I am making a big push this year. I've just finished one year on this platform and I'm very happy with where I am and we are making a grab for the next level now. Can we hit 20k subscribers in a couple of months time? If you would like to support further, 
then Shablam, Patreon, you saw their names over those reveal shots then, thank you to all of them. I will be making these files that I do in laser cut videos available to my Patreons. Just give me a little time to tidy them up and make them nice and neat. So if they were interested in getting a laser cutter, then they could do it themselves with my files. If you are interested in getting a laser cutter, check out the links down below. I get a slight kickback from any laser cutters you order through these links. So have a little browse and let them know it's worth sponsoring these videos. That is all from me. Thank you for watching. It is not a pile of shame. It's a pile of future fun. See you next time.